Hey all, this is our lunar pool for the weekend of the 16th and 17th of November 2019, of course. So we really are looking at post full moon energy here, right? We're in the weekend following that Taurus full moon that we just had. The star card is going to be the first card out in our reading. As always, the messages are for the collective, so for any and all signs. And they are uh, for the time um, during this weekend, but also surrounding and following this weekend. One second, I have a feline uh, requesting my assistance. Okay, back to it. We have so many felines in the house. Uh, it's just it's unavoidable. So we are looking at, again, the post full moon energy, the <clears throat> afterglow of the Taurus full moon. So let's see how that is treating you all. We've also got the eight of pentacles showing now, the eight of earth on top of that star card now the star card is an aquarian energy showing up carries um aquarius energy with it when it shows up now of course that that full moon in taurus was there with uh uranus which is still there so we can be seeing that uranus and aquarian energy showing up because of that yeah, I think a, a lot of people, for a lot of people that, um, for whatever reason, that Uranus in Taurus energy was really accessible, potent, really affecting them, or is now because of having had just, just recently the full moon there in Taurus as well. while the sun and Mercury is, is opposing that over in, in Scorpio, right? For a lot of you, this message is going to be about work. It's going to be how that energy is affecting your work life. It looks like we're talking about the type of work that you actually earn, uh, rewards, um, a fair wage pay for for doing work with your hands work uh, that requires a specific type of talent artistic work perhaps for a lot of you maybe repetitive monotonous work perhaps long hours uh, but you're doing all that you're, you're dedicating all of that time and energy because of those that return most likely i'm not saying it's only because of that return but you are seeing a return for your efforts So some of you have manifested a new job for yourself, have manifested new work for yourself. You've gotten a second job or longer hours, or you finally got that um, promotion that you were wanting. Um, and I see here the second major arcana card showing up in the recent past position, the third major arcana card now showing up in the near future. So the chariot is what's gotten you there. This is perhaps a Cancerian energy, could be in your own chart or around you, but this is youthful, confident energy uh, speeding toward its goal, um, bending nature to its will, harnessing um, it, its, its force in a chosen direction toward a, a chosen decided upon goal and refusing to let anything stop it from getting there mowing things down in its path perhaps in pursuit of said goal right and because i think because you sh you showed that um type of determined pursuit that persistence in pursuit of a goal the divine really has met you halfway here it may feel like a wish has been granted right That star card could also be talking about a lengthy healing, a long-term healing that is taking place. So 
So some of you have needed this new work, this new job, this new ability to earn, um, utilize your talents and earn doing so, right? As part of the healing process, as part of healing whatever you know or feel needs to be mended in your life, right? Needs to be fixed in your life. So maybe that is your finances or how your, your career situation is looking or your living situation. Maybe you needed that, that second job or that promotion or a job that paid more or something like that in order to mend, heal, fix uh, a living situation or even a, a relationship situation. The, that third major arcana card in the near future is actually the judgment card. It showed up in reverse. This is also Aquarian energy to me. And can be speaking about in the near future, needing to find forgiveness for yourself or others, not being able to resurrect something perhaps. There are a lot of different messages coming through uh, with just a few cards. So some of you are dealing with an Aquarius or a Cancerian specifically. Maybe trying to work on a relationship with, with someone and, and it's not going to be able to be re resurrected, at least not on the path that you're on now in the near future. And so your advice card then is the Queen of Swords, the Queen of Air. Uh, more uh, Aquarius energy or Gemini or Libra saying uh, that you need to see the <clears throat> see the truth about what is being presented to you, who is presenting themselves to you and judge accordingly. Cut any one or thing out of your life that is holding you back accordingly. Make a mind over heart decision. See clearly, think clearly, trust what you know. And it does look like for some of you, there is something in the near future that can't be resurrected. So if what you know is that that, that it turns out to be true, it can also be saying you need to cut someone out who who is holding you back in some way. For some of you, there's there's someone or something that you you can't truly find forgiveness for just yet, um, and so you may need to cut that individual out of the situation. I just want one more card for us in this spread. Uh, I want a more distant future card. It's just sort of a, an abbreviated Celtic cross that we're doing here. It's what I normally do for these lunar pools. And while I'm waiting for it to come out, I will go ahead and say thank you so much for all of your support to Lunatics Tarot, for supporting the channel with me and all of the different ways that you do. Uh, all of the information that you would need to donate or um, order or inquire about personal readings can be found in the description box right down below this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you for checking that out. The Nine of Fire, the Nine of Wands shows up as the last card out. And the High Priestess is your fourth major arcana card. Four out of six cards here are major arcana cards. Let me get that nine of fire for us. Still waiting on something, always waiting on something, perhaps. Um, attracting the worst or a negative outcome to oneself by expecting it, focusing on it, worrying about it, anticipating it, right? It looks like this is about trusting your intuition, perhaps keeping secrets.
trusting your intuition about being suspended in between two different things or people and needing to let something fall, something crumble, something fall apart, come to an end. It's sort of like some of you are sensing or perhaps downright know that this upheaval, this um, moment of your foundation being completely rocked and perhaps shattered is on its way with the high priestess and then the hanged man and the tower. It's like you're waiting. You already know. And so you're waiting for something to fall apart. Um, so if you're suspended in between two relationships, of course, it could be one of those. Um, and if this is about work and job, maybe you had to take this new job. So you're waiting for things to fall apart with the old one. Maybe you're juggling too many. Let me sit with this for one minute. So I am definitely seeing that whether it is work, jobs, or people, you are suspended between two things, two states of being, two different energies. Um, and, and you, as I said, sense that this cannot last, that this is coming to a point where what is not truly for you has to fall away because there's not enough time and energy to keep going to both things that you're suspended in between, right? To both things that you're uh, I want to say juggling, even though we don't see the two of pentacles in this short, short reading. Um, and, and, and it's a struggle because I, I think, um, I think what a lot of you need to hear is that this is, this is a struggle for you because what you are going to have to essentially cut loose or cut away, um, judge very harshly and, and be very um, almost cold, but certainly pragmatic and matter of fact, as you uh, don't allow this thing to take too much of your person to take too much of your time and energy any longer is something that you do have a pure love for. But it also may be something that is dangerous for you. You have a pure love for that person or thing. Does it give that purity back to you? Uh, does the does the love, the energy it, it gives back to you embody that same type of, of purity? I don't, it may be dangerous. It may not be safe for you. And if your intuition is is struggling or, or rather if your conscious mind is struggling to hear, listen to your intuition in this matter of, of um, two people or things that you're suspended in between, uh, being near water, spending a lot of time near water can really help you to connect with that Piscean part of you that we all have in us. Um, uh, that's that we all have governing some part of our chart at least. Right. And, um, and to to trust to trust the intuitive knowing your your intuition your intuitive knowings are going to be fairly quiet but very certain right not anxious not worried not um, paranoid right not unsure certain and and so um, and so it won't need to to panic you or scream at you. Um, and I think the other thing that a lot of you need to hear is that having trouble forgiving yourself for letting this person or thing go that you do have a pure love for in order to pursue a, a different path, um, is the type of forgiveness that the whole world struggles with. And perhaps that your entire community um, may be immediately surrounding you, but maybe your community online, maybe um, just your community as far as your peers, the people in the world who truly are going through the same thing you are, right? There's a community of people, if not a world of people who, who do and, and are struggling with forgiveness for the same thing. Um, it's not easy. It's a fact of life. 
um, that you, you there's no way that you're going to have enough time or energy to continue this suspension between two things. Um, and I think that the suspension period has been nice because you don't want to come to the part where something has to fall apart, um, fall away in order for something better to to kind of come together. But you can make your own wishes come true here. Grant your own wishes as it looks like you have been doing, rejuvenating yourself, bringing yourself back to life. Um, but as you have pursued this goal with such confidence, such determination, and again, youthful energy, um, you have realized your, at least your higher self, your intuition, your higher mind has realized that the amount of work required and the transformation that it is going to, going to cause you to undergo won't allow space then for you to also resurrect something else. So there's another project, job, relationship, something that is around this same time here in the near future is not going to be resurrected, is not going to come back to life the way that you are. And perhaps this goal is. It has either been resurrected along with you or it's been part of what has helped you to rejuvenate yourself, right? But there's something else that that can't be. And some of that some of you may be struggling to forgive yourself regarding that. And again, just know that there's an entire community of people uh, who, if not all of us, right, um, struggling with the same thing. I think a lot of you are working on listening to your your intuition, working on some type of psychic ability. And or your and or you're keeping what you're working on very secret, very private, right? Keeping it close to the chest. Um maybe because it is you expanding your psychic abilities, but certainly because it's a goal that you're trying to manifest that's very important to you, you're not talking about it. You're not talking about it. You're keeping your wish quiet. You're keeping your head down and you're working and you're working. And uh, it may be for some of you a completely separate area of your life where a relationship also then wants to be resurrected, but it's just, it's not happening. And you're really encouraged and advised here to trust your intuition, trust your clear cognizance, if that's something that's been tuning in, turning on, turning up for you. Um, any intuitive knowings though, any psychic knowings, trust that you see the truth, you know the truth about this, this other path, this person, this relationship, whatever it is that you may need to cut out in some sense, again, not because you don't have a pure love for it, but because one, it may be dangerous for you in some way, but two, there just doesn't look like there, that this suspension can be maintained, Right. This is a temporary state, giving you the ability and the opportunity to enjoy a new perspective. And you may appear martyred in this space, but you you are at peace. And again, I think in, in large part because this quiet before the storm is is less painful than you feel that this this storm is going to be. You've been bending nature to your will in trying to manifest something. Again, get near the water if you're having trouble listening to hearing your, your intu intuition. But this entire process is transforming you. So you're sort of blossoming into being able to trust those intuitive knowings more. And it may be that this situation is the catalyst for you to learn how to do so. Uh, but again, you can make your own wishes come true here. See, and the, the, the whole reason that this, the path that has to be cut, the path, person, job that has to be cut, even though you have a real pure love for it, 
the whole reason that that thing might be that other path person or job might be dangerous for you for some of you it may be really dangerous but for others it may just be showing up as possibly dangerous for you because it distracts or deters or takes you away from the path that you truly want to be on that's truly meant for you doesn't allow you enough time the the suspension trying to extend the suspension period could be dangerous for you because then that means you don't follow either path when really you already know which one brings you to life which one sets you on fire which one pushes you forward which one is your driving force and motivation um, so yeah, water can help you get more in touch with that if you're struggling, but you do seem to know. I think a lot of you are dreading the lack of forgiveness, not being able to find it from someone else, not being able to find it for yourself. And maybe the love coming from this path that you're cutting used to be more pure or in your memories it is. And so part of this nine of fire showing up here in the outcome can be you looking back over your shoulder, afraid you're going to realize you chose the wrong path, you made the wrong mistake, um, or you, you made a mistake, you, you, you made the wrong choice. Um, and, and that can absolutely attract the worst to you by expecting it, by expecting there to be this complication, this problem, this lack of forgiveness, these hurt feelings, this um, epiphany that you you've you've completely messed up your life or something you know um that can cause you to stall so long that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that can cause you to bring such an anxious energy to what you are choosing to focus on that again it's a self-fulfilling prophecy right it, that's it's a very distracted and uncertain energy a very exhausted and tired energy that you might bring into your present work and project which deserves your choice deserves your love deserves your energy and if you you give it this exhausted tired anxious version of yourself then perhaps you know it will turn out to be just as good as the wrong choice just you know pretty much the same as the wrong choice uh, because it's not really you that you're bringing to the activity then right or the person the relationship this could be about um, anything any subject area or area of your life specifically but the other way that i think that you can make your own wishes come true is that you just may need help with this right help in um learning to trust your intuitive knowings more help in um in this this new chosen path help in letting go of the path that you're cutting um you may be being offered help already presently um, or you may need to ask for it and i think if you're struggling with this and if you sense that that's that that's true um that you may be resisting help that could be beneficial for you for some reason, then I think that that's absolutely how you can make your own wishes, your own dreams come true here by accepting that help, seeking it, asking for it, looking for it, or simply accepting it. It may just be um, it may just be getting near water and allowing that to work its magic. If you, if you sense some type of resistance even to that suggestion, which can't be hard to come by, right? Doesn't have to necessarily be a large body of water. Um, if you're even resistant to a suggestion that would even if it doesn't work is otherwise harmless, right? Then you may want to ask yourself. why you don't want to know what your higher self or your intuition is trying to tell you why you are resisting ultimately that that honest information from yourself also the other thing i want to leave you with ask yourself if you believe that attracting or i'm sorry expecting the worst to happen can literally attract it directly to you i know it to be true wholeheartedly um but ask yourself that question just 
make sure that you and you are square with your answer to that. And if your answer to that question is yes, then stop it. Then stop it. You're crossing your own wires, right? You, you know, we, when, we, when we do that, we're confusing ourselves, we're tricking ourselves, we're crossing our own wires. If you believe that you can attract the worst to you by expecting it, and yet you're sitting around twiddling your fingers anxious about uh, what's going to creep up from your past or present itself as a problem on your current chosen path, um, then what are you doing to yourself? Then, then the next question is, why are you doing that to yourself? And maybe you just need to see it and just be mindful of it. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of different ways we could, we could interpret this message, but that's where we will leave our lunar pool for the weekend of the 16th and 17th of November, uh, 2019, of course, again, uh, thank you so much again, just for uh, being here with me for checking it out. And I do hope that you all continue to make the most of this, uh, post Taurus full moon energy. The moon is in cancer now currently. I did sort of miss it moving through Gemini as far as lunar pools are are concerned. And then before the weekend is over, uh, late on Sunday evening, my time anyway, it will transit into Leo. So we have Gemini, Cancer, Leo energy in this um, afterglow of the Taurus full moon, of course. And, and really, I still feel that um, for a while, it's, it's post full moon energy. Um, but you know, it shakes out differently for everyone. So we will leave it at that. And I truly look forward to doing another lunar pool for all of us just as soon as I can.